Welcome to this video on the Alpha 8.1 update that was released on the 21st of June 2018. If you're watching this in the future, it's a fairly substantial update, especially considering it's only just over two weeks since the Alpha 8.0 update came out. Big congratulations to the dev there for getting on top of the bugs and taking some of the community feedback. I think that is a terrific effort. Congratulations to you guys. In this video, I'm not going to go through every single last detail. I was It's just going to consist of me sitting here reading down a big long list of changes, bug fixes and minor updates. If you, if, if you guys have a particular interest in a certain aspect of the game, there will be a link in the video description that will take you to the full release notes for this update. In this video, what I'm going to do is touch on the main changes that I can demonstrate. Also, I'm going to talk about some other changes which maybe I can't demonstrate. And I think what we're going to do now is just get straight in and we'll deal with the first big change that has been introduced for this update, and that is the addition of the default creative mode. Default creative may seem a little bit of a waste of time if you want to play, but given the strong building elements of Imperium, this is a good place to go and practice building a ship, building a base, before you actually get into the main gameplay. So there's a quick little tip there for you guys. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the default random. I'm going to put a specific seed in just uh, just so I know where I'm going. So well, that's an 8174. And I'm just going to set that. We're going to stay on medium. Now, now there has been a change to the easy difficulty. I'm sure most of you are not particularly that interested in it, but they've now added the heater conditioner to the starting conditions and they've also added extra food and medical to that starting condition but we're going to start on medium so we're just going to go straight in i mean there haven't been that many changes to the actual start of of, of the campaign and of course the biggest one is the change in planet size which is why we're going in so here we are guys we're usual starting scenario we're in the drop pod we're coming down onto the planet I'm going to head that way for a very specific reason because I actually know that the wreckage is over there. Uh, I know it's a bit of a cheat, guys. I mean, but I, I want to get through this fairly quickly. And we're just going to come down and crash. So we found a copper deposit. Oops, and of course we're just going to go there. We're going to skip the Robinson Protocol. And you can see straight away we get all this nice goodies stashed into the toolbar. One interesting thing is, I think before you had to manufacture a survival tool, they seem to have added it now as part of the default start conditions. I mean, it's not a big deal, to be honest, simply because it to, to make a... Uh, survival tool there's no app no resources required and you just do that i mean i just make one for the fun of it guys so it's not particularly that interesting now of course the big change is the planet size now this is a very personal view i i think that going down a planet i can understand the reasoning behind it that people want to be able to get in get established and get out into space my main concern with going this way is the fact that it's now taken the new gameplay styles that were introduced to 8 plus 0 back to the 7.6 starting scenario which was very much you land you get established you build a base you built a the necessary vehicles and the focus was very much getting out onto space I think what they've lost by going down, because this is actually a class three planet, which is a quarter of the size of the class class four planet. And I think what they've actually done by doing this is taking away another game option from players who would like to spend some time setting up on a large planet, exploring it, encountering lots of points of interest before they go up into space. So they've constrained the gameplay. Now, my preferred option would be for in the def default start scenario that there is a an option where you can choose the size of the planet i mean 
I wouldn't go to extra large, but maybe between class size three, class size four, so that players that want to vary their gameplay style have the option. And I'll, exp I'll explain this a bit more as we go along, guys. But as you can see here, this is the new planet size. It's I, th I think it's comparable. It's a bit difficult to judge, but I think you now have a planet which is comparable in size with the 7.6 star. And as you can see, what we're going to do is wander off in this direction just to let you guys have a look round. And I don't know, it, the, the part of the mystery of the fog of war seems to have now disappeared with this change because, I mean, you look round, you can see the mountains in the background there. And looks we're just getting out of range. And it does take away some of that initial challenge as well because you can see here i've exposed a copper deposit over here and a silicon deposit which anyone who's experienced the game since the 8.0 update knows that the in this direction is the actual wreckage right guys as you can see we've just now walked up and we found the wreckage over there so that's how easy it is to find the wreckage there is one curiosity which i have found by actually making this video and if I actually show in the tab here, you can see we've got an emergency generator, but it, the survival constructor does not show the portable heater conditioner and the portable survival constructor. And when I first saw that, my immediate reaction is, oh, they've made a mistake. But in fact, I, I suppose I won't be able to do this now because I won't have enough uh, points. How many points have I got? Oh, we can. We've got 740 points. All we need to do is find some, some stuff to pick up. Yeah, the, those techs do not appear until you get to tech level 2. There we are. So we've now reached tech level 2. And as by magic, they've appeared. Now, I, I don't think that's a change for the 8.1 update, but I actually found that as quite curious. And I think that might be a little bit confusing for a new player, but then if they do the Robertson protocol, they'll be directed in the right direction. Right guys, so that is a demonstration that with the small planet now, it kind of takes away that challenge of finding that initial wreckage if you don't play the Robertson protocol and finding those initial resources, which again takes me back to this start now has got very much the same feel as the 7.6. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit from this game and load a game that I've already been playing just to demonstrate the concept as well. So we're just going to quit out. Right, guys, welcome to this save game that I played. This is roughly half an hour's play. I'm having to stand next to the heater because we're very close to the poll because I want to show you something here but before we do that I want to show you how much of the planet I've been able to explore on a motorbike and it's also interesting the fact that I have all this exploration now so you can say I've explored uh, well 25% of the planet and I haven't yet found a POI which I don't know if that is a problem I mean we got the alien tower there I never visited it so again, it comes back to what I was saying that it, I don't know, it just weakens that initial gameplay and the challenge that I've gone around. I found lots of resources that the challenge from the resources, I found some Promethium on the edge of the radiation zone. I didn't try to mine it simply because I didn't want to die from radiation. Anyway, the other thing I want to show you up here is I'm just going to pick that up. I mean, I haven't built anything. I mean, that half an hour's running around gameplay was literally me uh, make, grabbing the bike and getting straight in on it guys I, I mean I didn't do anything like collecting resources or and anything as such now what I want to show you here is if I come up here and this was one of the features of when 8.0 came out you can see here that the temperature is now drops as you approach the tundra zone so we come in here and as you can see the temperatures dropping we're, we're, we're okay we're 24 degrees and actually let's just get onto the bike actually i don't want to drag this out too much if we ride out onto the tundra i could die here but you can see now the temperature drops minus three minus four this is the tundra zone and 
what I'm going to do is now ride through into the polar region. Are we on into the polar region now? Yeah, we're just entering now. And you can see the temperature's dropped. But with the 8.0 release, the temperature actually rose up in this area. And so that's to illustrate another change that was introduced with this 8.1 update in the fact that the poles are a bit more hazardous until you actually get yourself a suit. Now, other changes that have been introduced with this update, I've, I know I've put kind of dragged out that about the small planet, but to me, I think it is a fairly big issue, and I know it can be contentious. That many, I know many of you will say, yeah, we should be a small planet, we want to get up to space, but I do want to return back for, for the final time about the the play style and giving uh, players the options to, to develop their own theme and scenario. And I think that is very much the context when you play space survival type games not everyone wants to play the game the same way and if I can stop keep crashing into rocks I'm going to start annoying myself you can see now the temperature is still cold. three rocks in a row okay stop talking anyway I've got to talk because we're making this is the purpose of the video anyway I think what I'll do is I'll just get up here in this direction oh, we'll just keep going guys let's uh, see yeah oh our first P, uh, POI and it's floating up in space. <laughs> there we are. That's the first one I found on this planet. And it's actually an elevated one, which is pretty cool. I actually do like the elevated ones. And it does drive you to actually want to get out and make a... I mean, the uh, trouble is it will probably end up firing at me. Uh, I shouldn't really do this, but never mind. Is it friendly? Yeah, it's a shrine. That's okay. That's not too bad. Then we reach level three. So let's just get out of here. So other changes introduced with this update. Actually, let's just get on top of here and I'll sit up here and put the heater out so I don't die. I think yeah. I think we can just drop here and I'll just go. Oops. I'll just jump off and we'll just deploy the heater and pick the bike up out of habit if I stand next to it that should bring my temperature back up so other changes introduced with this update to stay with the starter plan to begin with and as I say I've already mentioned the fact that temperature reduction in glacier polar, uh, polar snow and polar biomes they've added more snowy caps to mountains although I have to be honest I haven't actually found any of those yet I did try and look but I couldn't find it They've reduced the impact of height change on temperature. It's quite a subtle change, but I think it can add to the initial adventure on the starter planet. Now, the big change is updates to the AI, and one which I've, I've encountered, which is they've reduced the size of spider groups and the number of spider spawn points. points. If any of you guys have watched my series, you'd be aware that I was being chased around the map by about 10 spiders at one point which I found quite irritating. So they've addressed that issue. The other thing they have added to spiders is they've now added the ability of spiders to actually search for you. I'm not too sure what that means, but what it actually says in the release notes that spiders will go back to the, your initial position and look for you. <laughs> that could be an interesting concept to explore. They've also introduced changes in behavior for mechnoids and cave worms. They don't actually specify exactly what they mean by that, but I think they're trying to make them act in a more realistic way. Another change is they've added a more detailed collision box to what I would guess is humanoid opponents. It says it, the, the collision box will now allow you to um, hit arms and legs, which again is pretty realistic because I have noticed that when you fight, you have to hit the main body mass and you, you'd think you'd be shooting at, at, at that low and in effectively you'd be doing no damage whatsoever. To wind this video up, I'm going to pose a bit of a question for any of you guys who've been following the channel and my 8.0 series because I'm, I'm in two minds with this situation. Would you like me to start again with the 8.1 update or do you want me to carry on with the 8.0 series? I'm a bit concerned that that series is now no longer representative of the status of the game and I feel that I want to keep things in line with the status of the game because I, I doubt very much if the devs are going to go back to the larger planets 
for default at start. So what I'm going to do is leave it a bit open and my inclination is to restart because the play gameplay style has changed. But anyway, I'm open to comments, suggestions, opinions. Feel free to chuck it in there. If you've got any questions about this 8.1 update, feel free to add a comment to the video and I'll try and answer it for you. And I think this is where I'm going to leave it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, whatever you do, enjoy your gaming.